Hello, everyone. My name is Professor Tiffany Gill, and I am the Medical Laboratory Technology Program Coordinator here at the College of Southern Maryland. Today, I'm going to speak with you a little bit about the profession um, to begin with, and then we'll talk about the MLT program that we offer here at the college. And um, finally, we will be talking about transfer options that MLT graduates have after they receive their Associates of Applied Science. So the clinical laboratory has a hierarchy, which is dependent upon educational requirements and um, certifications and experience. So let's take a look at that really quickly. What does a medical laboratorian do? Well, a medical laboratorian performs diagnostic testing so that patients receive accurate and safe care from our patient-facing team members, which would be physicians and nurse practitioners and nurses. And so although we are not really seen by the patients, we play a huge role within their care. And so what happens is we are performing that diagnostic testing that is going to um, provide the diagnosis. So whether the patient is fully healthy and just receiving a yearly checkup, or there is something that is wrong and they have gone to their physician's office or they have gone to the hospital, um, the medical laboratory does the same thing in either case. We analyze specimens that come from the human body in order to find pathology or measure different components within the body in order to see if there is pathology, which includes looking at blood cells and um, trying to find maybe if there's an infection of some kind with a microorganism. So here's the clinical laboratory hierarchy. We have an administrative and a medical lab director. And so um, the uh, medical lab director over here is a pathologist. They are a physician specializing in pathology, which is known as the study of disease. And then over here, we have the administrative lab director under which the clinical side of the laboratory is. And so depending on your size of facility and the type of laboratory that you have, this may look a little bit different. So this is not a one size fits all. So underneath the administrative lab director, there are managers of different departments and there are many departments, um, again, depending on your facility. I just included a few here. So you see there's blood banking, um, clinical chemistry, hematology, microbiology, there's also molecular, um, and um, maybe you might have an infectious disease section as well that's maybe not a part of chemistry or micro. But within these, um, within these sections, we have four, two-year and four-year um, laboratorians who are working in order to provide those diagnostic results. So we have medical laboratory technicians, just like the program we offer here at CSM. And then there are medical laboratory scientists, and that's the four-year version of an MLT. So once an MLT graduates, um, if they are expecting to move forward in their career, they can go get a certification from ASCP, work as a certified professional, and they can also do an online degree or an in-person degree um, that builds on it, and that would be the MLS. So there is there are other options as well that we're going to talk about shortly um, that will make it so a person is eligible to get an MLS certification because this really is a certification um, as much as it is a position, and we'll clarify that shortly. So here you also see that there are there's phlebotomy and send out. So phlebotomists are the professionals who are part of the laboratory. And they are the people who do venipuncture, which means they draw your blood. That is their um, main priority, and that is their job, and they're the experts. So if a, um, a nurse or a nursing tech, um, whoever the case may be, um, needs to uh, ask for help, 
or um, it's not a unit where um, the nurses are trained to draw blood, they will call a phlebotomist and the phlebotomist will come and draw the blood. So here we have a little bit of a springboard basically of the educational requirements in order to become these different levels of laboratorian. So here on the bottom, we have, um, we have what high school graduates can end up achieving um, depending on their experience and also their education. So phlebotomists and um, medical laboratory assistants they both can get their um, ASCP certification and that's what these acronyms are here. And um, you can go on the ASCP website in order to find that out and I'll show you um, that shortly. But um, our college education begins here with the MLT associates degree. There is also, uh, there are also degree programs for um, medical lab assistant and phlebotomist, um, but it may not result in a degree. So I'm sorry if that was confusing. So a medical laboratory um, technician gets an associate's degree. And as I said, the four-year version would be a medical laboratory scientist. And from MLS, which is medical laboratory scientist, we can then move forward to the other parts of the laboratory, including management and um, anything else. So usually in order to move up, you're continuing to get another degree or certification in order to move forward. And once we get to MLS, that's kind of decided upon by the individual and their individual career goals. So in order to uh, figure out if you are eligible to be um, certified in any of these, you would need to go to the ASCP cert certification um, website, which would be ASCP.org. And then you want to go to the Board of Certification tab. You can go down to get credentials and then US certification options. And that's where you're going to decide which one that you want to complete and therefore um, what one you would be able uh, to take. So I'm going to take a minute and show you that website. So here, um, if you go to ASCP.org, Still on screen too, I believe. Does not look like it's sharing. I apologize. Okay, I am sharing my screen. All right, so um, here is the ASCP website. If you go over to Board of Certification, you click there and you go to get credentialed because you have not been credentialed yet, you cannot go to these others. So if you go to get credentialed, um, you'll see the certification exam process, here's US certifications, but one thing that you can do immediately is go to the eligibility assistant and you can, um, use that button in that resource in order, um, it'll ask you questions about uh, your qualifications and your history as in like your work history and any of your education to see what it is you would be able to apply to for. Here is a video of how to apply as well, but this is your US certifications. These are your highest volume certifications. You've noticed already the PBT, which is phlebotomy technician. There's MLT, MLS, and then histotechnician is on the other side, the anatomic patholo pathology side of the laboratory. So I can click on MLT and here I've got four different routes that would make me eligible to take this exam. It gives me the role of the MLT within the laboratory and then documentation that might be needed or reading resources. And then you apply and you can look at 
exam information. The application fee is also um, available there. And what we try to do is get um, grant funding to send our students to get or to take the exam once they've graduated. But that is not always, that's not always possible. Um, so that's on a yearly basis. All right, we're gonna go back to the presentation. So before you decide um, whether you want to come into the MLT program or not, it really is a good idea to map out your trajectory of your career, what it is you really want to do. MLT is a great foundation and beginning, and it could be a great career if that is what you want, but you want to make sure that you are um, well informed about the possibilities of what you can do with your um, degree. So we just reviewed the uh, requirements um, for certification. There are multiple routes and you can go and click on those yourself. All right, so the options for a um, medical laboratory technician uh, who is certified would be to move forward and get an MLS degree, sorry, MLS certification, which would include a bachelor's degree. Um, you may end up in different areas of, um, of the lab or public health. So even though we say the laboratory, the medical laboratory, this degree is really transferable and opens up so many doors um, throughout the scientific field to begin with. So if you see here, a hospital is just one of the types of um, institutions you could work for or entities you could work for. There are also forensics, government, um, public health, and pharmaceutical. That's not on here yet, but you'll see that later. So there are a lot of different options you can um, choose to pursue once you get this degree. And so I've, I've kind of tried to narrow it down as to what specifically those may be, those options may be, and then what type of uh, degree you may end up or certification you may end up requiring in order to move forward with those options. So as I said, there are a few career paths that are outside of medical, but here is just a list and we'll talk more about these later as well. So um, medical laboratorians, I don't think a lot of people know this, are involved in most parts of the care that a patient receives. So uh, medical microbiologists are, um, are able to work in pharmaceutical uh, company labs to create medicine. And so um, medicine, <laughs> is actually created from other microorganisms. So microorganisms like bacteria have the ability to fight off other bacteria so that they don't gain access to their food source. And so as, um, as the medical profession started to realize that, um, laboratorians were able to create medicine. That's how we get penicillin, um, that's from a fungus. Uh, streptomycin is from a bacteria called streptomyces. So it's really exciting the, the things that you can do, but the, the laboratory is throughout all of patient care. So whether it is the creation of the medicine or to identify if that medicine is at the correct level within the blood. Um, so if the dose is correct, we test that. And also if it's even the right medicine to give because if it's not um, if it's not the right medicine to treat the right kind of microorganism, then um, it's not going to be effective and can actually hurt someone. So um, we also tell the physicians, um, here's the report of what the microorganism um, should be treated with, and here are your options. And so the, the laboratory um, can also be in preventative care because you can go, as we said, to a well checkup and you can have your, um, your blood drawn to just see your overall health. So it's a really exciting field and we are rapidly changing and 
improving and innovating. Um, we're a very young profession, actually. We only really started at the beginning of the 1900s and um, hospital laboratories were really only around starting in the 1920s as a standard. So this is a very young profession and it's really exciting to be a part of it. And um, you know, I hope, I hope that you would be excited about it too. But um, you, know, you can end up as a laboratory and professor like myself. Um, the FDA um, works, the Food and Drug Administration works, um, with laboratorians or laboratorians work for them um, to make sure that what the public is consuming is safe. Um, lab MLT graduates can also go into forensics. They can become part of the um, instrument manufacturer teams to make sure that the analyzers we use in the lab are um, current and they're doing an amazing job so that we can provide great care. Um, as we've been saying, uh, medical and reference laboratories would also be um, obviously the the immediate uh, <laughs> the immediate job that you would get um, when you graduate from this program. But there really is a lot of interesting uh, fields that you can go into um, with in the type of profession. So even research and public health, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, um, those are laboratorians that make the vaccines and um, test different samples throughout the, um, throughout the United States to see what's going on. It's really incredible. So here, um, this is just going to be some information about the medical laboratory technology program itself. So how long is it? Uh, how many days a week do you need to come to school? And where do we go to clinical rotations? And what's, um, what is this capstone project that we have? So first of all, this is an um, Associates of Applied Science degree, meaning that someone can go out and get a job immediately. And so that's great <laughs> because we are able to provide, we are able to give back to the community immediately as soon as someone graduates. And it is highly, highly recommended to get certified upon completion of this program by ASCP. NACLS is our accreditor of our program to make sure that the quality of your education is up to standards to make you eligible for the ASCP certification exam. We have gotten um, the highest award of accreditation every time so far. And so we do have a very uh, great program here at CSM. The uh, program quick guide is available on the website. I'll show you shortly. And it shows you the courses that are required for the program along with the prerequisites that are needed in order to take those, um, to take those courses. And this is a great way to plan ahead of time. But once you get into CSM, once you get into the program, there is a there is an online um, student uh, planning software, and I do highly suggest that you use it. Honestly, you kind of have to use it, and we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, it's really great, and it it's accessible on your phone anywhere. So. Um, We'll talk about that shortly. So the pre-petition semester is um, basically taking courses that are required in order to get into the program. So one of them is the summer course, MLT 1012 and 1012L, and that is the introduction to clinical laboratory science and the lab. So that is required to get in unless you are an ASCP certified phlebotomist you have to take those courses. If you are an ASCP certified phlebotomist already, you can automatically apply and you don't need to take MLT 1012 and 1012L. Also, if you take MLT 1012 and 1012L and you want to have a job while you're going through school, while our clinical sites do um, uh, make um, medical lab assistant jobs and phlebotomy jobs available sometimes. It depends on each individual's case. 
Um, you can go to our um, College of Southern Maryland phlebotomy program um, and take this MLT 1012 and 1012L and be eligible to sit for the ASCP phlebotomy technician certification. So you could do that in the summer that you're taking MLT 1012 and 1012L, and they're on um, different days. So the phlebotomy program is absolutely um, something you can do simultaneously with the intro course, and then you can sit for your certification and have an amazing job while you're in the MLT program. Or you may just choose to be a phlebotomist. Either way is great, and we thank you for choosing the lab. So, um, you can also do more courses in that pre-petition semester if you wanted to. Um, at the college, we are moving to seven-week courses. The MLT program will remain 15-week courses. However, the other non-major courses, are, um, depending on what they are, are moving to seven weeks, and you can absolutely take your non-major courses during summers. Um, so we do the traditional fall and spring semesters for the MLT program outside of that pre-petition um, summer course. So in the summer session before and the summer session in between your first and second years, you can absolutely take all those non-major courses in order to focus just on your MLT courses in the fall and the spring. Each of the MLT courses is only offered one time per year. So if you do not maintain the C, also known of 75% or higher, you would have to repeat the course and wait a year. And so we try to make it so that students are successful the first time around, but sometimes you do need extra time and that's okay. So the first year courses are two days a week. They're on Mondays and Wednesdays and for, they're for the whole day, nine to five. And then um, the second year courses are three days a week because you have two weekdays that are eight hour shifts at a clinical site. And you're working um, not as an employee, but you're doing, um, you're basically doing an internship in the clinical um, laboratory to uh, make sure you understand how to do the testing and applying what you've learned in the class and the classroom labs to the field. So um, they're on weekdays that are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are the, sorry, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays are clinical rotation possibilities. And Tuesdays, you still have class on campus. So when you come into this program, we do use our phones a lot. And so please make sure that you have a smartphone that you can take pictures and um, access Wi-Fi because we do put them into our lab reports and um, use them as a way to help you study. Okay, so here, um, I, I kind of forgot to mention, um, we also use our smartphones for the yearly competition that we're in, um, which as my YouTuber self, um, as Medical Lab Lady Gill, I teamed up with ASCP, which is our certifying body. And it's the largest hemato hematology competition in history. And so each year our students compete um, against other programs that are two-year and four-year programs across the country in order to um, end up in the Supercell Bowl. And for the first year, which was last year, 2021, we got, um, <laughs> we were eighth in the nation out of 71 programs. And you can see that on our website, that little banner that says um, that wonderful news. We were we were number two in week four, but we were unable to make it to the playoffs. But that's, you know, we do a lot of fun stuff in the, um, in the laboratory program as well. We try to do um, blood drives 
and um, virtual races and that sort of thing to keep you engaged with others in the profession and other students in the um, in the clinical laboratory educational programs as well. So here are our clinical rotation sites. We have um, hospitals throughout Calvert, Charles, and St. Mary's County. We are the only laboratory program in the Southern Maryland area. Uh, we do have sites in DC as well. And so um, MLT students are sent to locations that they should be experiencing the best um, clinical experiences. It's not, um, it's, it's not a pick and choose kind of deal. It's where you'll get the best um, experience to be, become a great professional. So here we have um, capstone project that is going to enable students to, or graduates to um, stand out uh, to their prospective employers. So um, there are, there are projects in almost every single course of the MLT program. And what they are, are scientific posters or PowerPoint presentations or the portfolio um, to, help, to help students prepare for the career that they're trying to get into, but also to prove that they understand what it means to be an entry level MLT. So it's proving their skills um, to those new uh, employers. So there's a resume and um, you know that's part of the that's part of the project. So here um, we have the career readiness uh, recognition event. It is before graduation. So prospective MLT graduates earn their white coat and they are bestowed with their white coat for the first time. And they get a professional pin and they um, take the oath to the profession, which is very important. And so um, the white coat shows the diagnostic authority of our graduates and laboratorians in general. Um, the laboratory field came from physicians. Um, when physicians in the early 1900s, late 1800s, realized how much their diagnosis relied on laboratory tests, they decided there needs to be a separate profession that does just that because more and more their diagnosis relied on that, those test results. And it, it was um, something that needed to be done. So um, that is where the medical laboratory came from. And that's why we also have the same length as physicians with our white coats, um, because we have that diagnostic authority, because we are the experts of the diagnostic testing. Okay, so after graduation, um, the MLTs uh, students, graduates, um, are expected to take their board of certification exam. It is uh, rapidly becoming a must have within the clinical climate. Um, there are some people that are still out there that haven't gotten their ASCP certification that work in the field, um, but it is a standard um, in many, many places, if not all. So it's very hard to get a job if you don't have ASCP certification. Um, so what is the ASCP certification exam? It is computer adaptive. And so that means that um, everyone who takes it, uh, the, the exam will be tailored to him or her. And uh, how well that person is doing is going to dictate the level of the next question that they're going to achieve. So even though you only need to get a 400 out of a 999 to pass, that isn't a failing score by normal terms because computer adaptive testing is constantly changing the um, severity of level of difficulty. 
So um, a 400 is fine. It's not an F and we're just passing people. It, it shows that that is a good level of capability. Um, and that person could have had an extremely hard test because they were, they were doing well. Um, or they, they might have had um, easier questions because maybe they weren't doing as well as someone else, but it really is to the individual. So um, as I showed you on that website, you would need to go to look at um, the eligibility requirements and provide documentation and the application uh, fee in order to apply. So once you have the ASCP certification, um, you have to maintain it every three years or you lose it. And so that means that someone with that credential needs to maintain um, educational opportunities. Um, so CEs, continuing educations that are applicable to that certification. So we don't just take any, um, <laughs> any continuing education. It has to meet the requirements set by ASCP and they need to be documented and submitted every three years. So here are again a few places that um, graduates can work once they've been um, certified. So one thing we didn't cover before was the temporary or travel tech and that is someone who wants to travel and is good at their job has had a few years of experience by then. And what they do is they go to areas where labs need people and they ask a temp agency to bring in um, a laboratorium for a certain amount of time in order to cover their staffing shortage. And so you get to choose um, places that you go throughout the United States. Even you can go throughout the world as well. So there are a ton of opportunities out there. The transfer options that we have available, um, there is a listing of them on our website. And there is a video that explains uh, those transfer um, opportunities as well. And one thing you always want to make sure is that whenever you're um, expanding on your career and your education, that if it is a medical laboratory educational program, it's accredited by NACLS. Um, if it's not accredited by NACLS, you may not be eligible to sit for the ASCP exam that you're hoping to. So make sure that it is a NACLS accredited program. So um, a four-year program, um, that is a math and science degree, and there's other ones as well, um, can meet one of the routes for the ASCP MLS exam. So you wanna make sure to um, look at those and plan accordingly. So here are our transfer, um, our transfer agreements, and the video is that one up at the top. This is a screenshot from our MLT website. And on the right, there are scholarships available also, and those are listed here as well. You also have a PDF that you can look at for online transfer options that are NACLS accredited programs um, at that link below the view all transfer agreements and the link below the view all scholarship opportunities also has a document telling you about the different MLT um, or the scholarships that apply for MLT. Okay, so this is also a screenshot on the right from the CSM MLT program website. Uh, it was a, a graphic that I made. So it just shows you a schematic of what you can do to earn your baccalaureate degree and still be eligible for the MLS certification from ASCP. So um, here you see that um, ASCP requires a four-year BA or BS. And you can either go to a NACLS accredited program on the left, or you can go to a life science degree program that has a certain number of semester hours um, required for um, the, the other route um, that is offered by ASCP. 
And looking on the left there, it's just showing you the eligibility assistant that we already looked at earlier on the ASCP BOC website. BOC stands for Board of Certification. Okay, so getting started in the MLT program means first you have to apply to be a CSM student. And if you need financial aid, put in for financial aid immediately. Financial aid, um, the FAFSA is due at the beginning of every year, um, about this time actually. So March um, um, or late February is when it's due. So here we've got um, the steps to enroll as a credit student. There is continuing education or workforce development and credit side. So those are two different things. So make sure you're on the credit side and um, our website has a step-by-step -step of how to become a student um, and you can follow those. You can go on to csmd.edu and type in um, apply and register or steps to enroll and it'll um, you'll find this as an option. You also want to make sure that you're um, going to your first year experience. Um, they, it's a group of resources and seminars and advising that helps you to plan your time here with us at CSM. So it makes it um, so that nothing is falling through the cracks and you are getting the exact experience that you need to and want to while you're here. You can go onto the CSM website and um, search uh, first year experience as well, but this is in the Student Life and Support Services website as, as well. Okay, so just to summarize, um, you need to apply to be a CSM student first. Uh, you can look in the academic catalog and the website for information about the MLT program. And then um, once you go and become a student, you need to start planning in our student planning software. And that's in the online services portion of your um, account. So getting started, um, you would want, again, that first year experience and to make an appointment with an academic advisor. Once you become an MLT student where you're in the MLT program, I become your faculty advisor. And so I can work together with um, academic advising as well in order to structure um, your time frame here and to make sure that you are getting everything you need in order to be successful in the program. So um, as I said, make sure that you're applying for the FAFSA. Um, our code is right here, it's 002064. You need to have that code or else um, you're going to have trouble getting the financial aid. You can also go to CSM Scholarship Finder um, and the bottom of the MLT website will show you ones that apply for MLT students. You can um, take placement tests if needed in order to make sure that you are eligible to get into the program and um, complete any courses that are needed before applying. The AS, sorry, the ACT and the SAT are required. So it's one or the other. So you need to have a standardized test in order to get into the program. And the scores are provided here, a 16 in the ACT and an 880 or a, through a 910 on the SAT for reading and math. So the score needs to be within the past five years to be applicable. If it's over five years, you need to go and do the test again. Or if you have a degree already, a college degree already, then you can end up waiving the standardized test. We suggest that students um, attend the new student orientation and registration session or sessions. Uh, in order to make sure that their transcripts are evaluated and are um, acceptable. 
you're going to make sure that you take that summer course, that um, set of summer courses that I was telling you about. It is the first session in summer. And even though we say summer, it starts in May. Okay. So you need to um, look for that and register um, in April or earlier. <laughs> So um, just to show you, oh darn, um, just to show you that, make sure that you are making um, appropriate payment arrangements with CSM in order to um, continue. So um, once you attend the welcome event and you go to the um, courses that you need in order to get into the program, you apply, you get in, you'll get a email that says um, that you've been accepted provided that you complete these courses or um, like the MLT 1012, 1012L because applications are due before that course is over. And so um, usually it will say, you know, you're accepted into the program provided that you get a C or higher in those two courses and whatever your individual case may be. And so once that's done and you are accepted, we have your initial MLT orientation in August, and I will put you in the MLT community, which is in my learning, our learning management system. And you will see when the orientation is, you'll have access to all this information and resources, and um, it will be accessible throughout the whole program. All right, so thank you for your attention and um, uh, your interest in the MLT program. So I want to show you one, a couple more things. So if you go to the MLT website, um, you can see the banner that goes across here and you can click through and see um, different uh, pictures of what students are doing within the program. Uh, I am a YouTuber. I have my own YouTube channel uh, known as Medical Lab Lady Gill, and we use that channel throughout the entire program because they're demonstration videos for what you're doing in class. So if you're curious about what we're going to be doing in class and you kind of want to get a feel for what the field is like, go on there, take a look, watch some videos. Um, it's a lot of fun. As, um, as we move down to through the website, uh, you can see information about our program. You can see that we are NACLS accredited right there. We have our stats, which um, we've only ever had one person who has not passed the certification exam. Um, the ACP certification exam, but now that person actually is certified um, after they did a four-year degree. So technically we're back at 100% um, of certification status. We have um, a video. This was the previous video that I'm replacing with this recording now. <laughs> and then um, this was a fun video about uh, our lab week one year. Here is that transfer video. You can click on this, it'll play. And our scholarship opportunities. And if you go down further, it shows you our, um, um, our outcomes that we're supposed to uh, display on our website. Again, this was one person <laughs> um, who didn't, Pass, but now we're at 100%. So that'll be um, the rest of it will be updated. So here we have um, career opportunities. You've already seen these in the um, earlier parts of the presentation. And here are essential functions of what you need to be able to do physically in order to be able to uh, make it through the program and uh, to make it in our profession. So thank you so much for watching and um, thank you for being interested in the MLT program and we hope to um, hear from you soon. Talk to you later, bye.